morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the uh, the Norton uh, live streams. Thank you very much for, for joining us today. Much appreciated. We've got a bit of a different show for you today. So we've got a bit of a, a guest appearance over here, which I'll introduce it in a moment. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a different live stream than we've done in the past. So this is the fifth in a series of six live streams we've been doing uh, this year. Um, and by the way, all of the other uh, previous live streams are available on our Norton EMEA YouTube channel. So if you want to catch up what we've done before, you can uh, have a look over here. Uh, so yes, we're going to be doing a little bit of something different today, something a bit, a bit more exciting. And, and we're seeing a, a, full, a full process on, on GRP sanding. Uh, but before we start, I just want to give uh, a little instruction to, uh, to the subtitle options that are available. At uh, the bottom of the screen, you can uh, select on the CC function a few different languages for, for my English to be, to be translated into your local language to hopefully make things a little bit easier for you to, uh, to follow the, the live streams. Uh, so, before we start, we'll go through a quick agenda. We'll see what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so, as we said, it's composite GRP, panel sanding and polishing is the subject. Uh, we're going to have a look at who the experts are who are going to be on, uh, uh, on, the, on the live stream today teaching you about uh, our processes. We're going to have a quick look at the composite market, who Norton and Freckler are and how the partnership is an uh, extremely powerful combination. We'll then go through our new composite uh, brochure that we have, uh, full of a guide, a complete guide to composite sanding and polishing. And then we'll be on to the practical sessions where we'll show you how it's actually, actually done. Uh, at the end of the session, we'll have live questions and answers. And on that point, uh, there is an option for you uh, in, on the side of your, uh, uh, in the chat function where you can ask a question. So please, throughout the whole stream, if you've got something you want to ask us about what you're seeing, any questions at all about the, the processes we'll be showing you today, pop them in the, the questions and uh, we will have a discussion at the end of the live stream, face-to-face uh, -face or live, uh, and, and hopefully we can give you the, the answer that's, uh, that's required, I hope. Okay, so let me now introduce you to the uh, experts that are uh, with you this morning. First of all, me, I'm Paul Gray. I live in Cheshire in England. I've been an application engineer for MRO, E-M-E-A, so the whole of Europe. 30 years in manufacturing, so a long time uh, Hard working, I think, Mark. What do you think? Mm, Something looks like, like it. So, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, 18 years here at uh, at Sangaban as well. So, uh, pretty good knowledge about abrasive uh, materials and systems. Um, speaking today uh, remotely will be uh, Christine Foster, who lives in Oxfordshire in England. She's the International Business Development Director at Freckler, and she's been working uh, with SGA to drive the profile range development, which, we'll, is, which is the range we'll be showing you today, the profile range. Christine joined uh, Freckler eight years ago uh, from a company called Thermos, and she speaks three languages, which is rather impressive. And uh, you saw a rather handsome gentle, gentleman stood next to me uh, earlier on on the first screen there, which is Mark Taylor. Mark's an application and training manager and also heavily involved in research and development at Fereca, who he has been with for eight years. Okay, so uh, nice, uh, nice bit of experience between the three of us. So here's Mark, I referred to earlier. Say hello, Mark. Hi. Great. Welcome, everybody. Good stuff. So, so be before we actually start doing the, the practical sanding and going through the systems that we're going to show you today, I'd like uh, just, for, to, just to set the scene about the composites market and why that's an important uh, uh, project for, for Sangaban and for Freckler and the combination of these two companies. So I'd like to ask Christine if you're on. Yes, hi. Hello, hi. everyone. Hello, Christine. How are you doing? I'm well today, thank you, and uh, good morning. Thanks for inviting me. It's our pleasure. So Christine's going to take you through a few, a few slides just to set out the scene about the composites and a little bit about Norton and Frecker and how we are, are working together. So over to you, Christine, and thank you. Thank you. Are you Exactly. The next slide. So composites is a growing market, no doubt. For example, since COVID, there has been a marked growth year on year globally in the sales of under 10 meter GRP motorboats for leisure use. And the idea of staycation has uh, meant no travel. So people have uh, been buying camper vans and caravans, pools and hot tubs and jacuzzis for holidays at home. And this we have seen with the statistics of growth. Um, outside domestic use, industrial market expansion is seen, especially in transportation. 
using composites in place of metals for trains, planes and high performance cars in particular. So composites by their very nature uh, of being a sandwich, if you like, of resin and reinforcement, either glass or carbon fibre, um, are very strong. And this is one of the reasons why they're being used more and more. Um, you could say one of the earliest examples uh, is a Mongolian bow, which is made of wood, animal, ligaments and bone and was an extremely strong weapon in uh, early days. So visible composite surfaces uh, can be a very high gloss finish uh, and they can look like uh, an automotive clear coat finish. Actually, they look very, very shiny, defect free and perfect in especially on high performance cars for example. Um, they are adaptable in shape because of the styles of manufacture. They can, they can be hand laid up, which is quite labour intensive. They can be made with vacuum pultrusion and uh, there's a lot of flexibility on, this, on the shapes of, uh, of composites because using moulds you can create some really intricate shapes. Um, as a, as a rule, resins are much stronger when used for tooling gels uh, to withstand heavy use and they're more soft for production gel coats. Um, traditionally, we're talking about epoxy, vinyl ester and polyester resins. So the, 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 the hardest being epoxy and the softest being polyester. Thank you. Yes, since we joined uh, the Sangaban group in 2018, Ferrecla has a natural fit with Norton brand for surface finishing. Um, we can provide together a basket of finishing products with a seamless process. Um, our abrasive polishers are water based and very low in solvents, and some of our newly developed polishers are as low as 0% VOC, which is really important. Um, we don't use fillers, so if the abrasive steps are done correctly, that's your job, guys, to make sure that's done, then the polishing process uh, provides a permanent finish with no drop back or reappearance of scratches. So this is a very uh, key advantage with Ferrecla compounds generally over our competitors or local produced pastes and liquids. So our main USP is to save time and material costs, which we do with um, our automotive polishing and composites. And now the logical step is to have a brochure to show the best and simplest finishing process on composite surfaces. Uh, which maximises these advantages of Norton and Ferrecla working together. So the brochure will be launched with the new look profile range in January 2022, covering the three main resins I mentioned, so epoxy, vinyl and polyester, and really with great tips um, that this is provided by a lot of work from Paul Gray in consultation with our technicians, including Mark Taylor and Roman Osterman. So we've really uh, got a great um, composite process uh, in place for you. I'm going to hand over now to the guys who are going to show you in action some of those steps. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Christine. Well, well presented. So, uh, so yes, it's a it's a nice partnership we have with uh, with Norton and uh, Frecker, and uh, I hope you'll agree by the end of this presentation, uh, a formidable team. So we better do a good job, Mark. Huh? We'll do our best. <laughs> That's the best way to say it, our best. Uh, okay, so. Um, we might as well get into the sanding now, so we, we get into the practical side of things. We've got a few different panels to show you today. Uh, one in front of us here, which is a polyester resin gel coat, and then uh, the second panel we're going to be doing is a vinyl ester ge gel coat, which is a tooling gel coat, and very old gel coat, and very hard gel coat. So that's going to be the, I would say, the tougher one to mm. do, Mark, would you say? Certainly, yeah. yeah. As long as the steps are done, we'll be good, though. Yeah, I should hope so. Uh, but polyester as a gel coat is, is pretty much the standard uh, gel coat we see out in the market because it's uh, cheap and cheerful really it's 80 percent of the applications are done with this uh, this particular gel coat and that's why important we show you how quick and easy you can get to a, a very nice finish on this uh, on this material we just have a quick slide if you can martin about the process we're going to be showing today so this is an example of the process guide that christine was referring to uh, earlier that we've created between uh, between our two two companies so it, it's really easy to follow the guide. It just shows you very visually what steps you need to take to get you to, a, to, to the finish that will be required by 
90% of your customers. Never going to suit everybody, but most people will be happy with the finish that's achieved from, from the steps that are shown out. And uh, we'll show you an another part of the brochure, uh, brochure later on. Okay, so no need to go into that slide too much detail. If you want a PDF copy of this, uh, of this brochure, just uh, contact uh, your, your local Norton or Freca branches and we can get that uh, over to you, no problem at all. So, first step, sanding polyester. Okay, so uh, as we saw, really simple four-step process. Uh, actually, to be honest, today we may be using five steps because this, again, is very old material. So we may be using three sanding steps, not two, because uh, that's an optional step within here. So it is a difficult one to finish because it's old and it's gone hard. Uh, but we might as well get straight into the sanding. Okay, so today I'm going to be using for the sanding is uh, our Norton uh, Random Orbit Sander. I'm going to stick with a, a 2.5 mil orbit today because I don't want to put too much of a scratch in here. If you're doing more aggressive work, it's better to get a 5 mm orbit sander because it's got a, a larger orbit and will act more aggressively. But we're starting with finest grits, so, uh, so a 2.5 mil uh, orbit is absolutely suitable for us. Uh, yeah, I'll have the mask on in a second. Um, now the product we're going to be using today as a sanding disc is our Norton uh, A293 product. So we just have a close up on that, Martin, if we can. Okay, so you can see uh, our A293 product in front of you there. You can see it's an aluminium oxide sanded disc. You can see it's got a kind of, uh, sort of whitish look to it. That's because it has our, our stearate layer on there, which is our anti-loading uh, layer on the product, which uh, resists or helps to resist the dust that you're going to create getting stuck to the disc. Okay, so it basically gives you longer life. 15 hole configuration, really important to be using dust extraction here, especially with you know, car, you know, fiber panels. We don't want to be breathing any of this dust. So the more dust we can take away from, uh, from the application, the better. Okay, so we ma make sure our disc matches the, uh, the backing pad that we have and we get the holes in the right place when we mount it. Okay, so let's get the pad onto the disc. And then I'm going to get a dust mask on because we should always be wearing these when we're sanding composite materials or dusty materials such as this today. Okay, so I'm going to start with P400 and then we'll move on to 600 and we'll finish the sanding process with 800 and then I'm going to pass over to my colleague Mark to do his magic at the very end. Okay, right, if we can turn the extraction off. Thank you, Mark.
Okay, so uh, we've got that sanded down now to 800 grit. And as I said before, the 600 grit is actually uh, an optional step. So you could do this P400 and then straight to P800, omitting the 600 step, if this is a fresh panel. And when the panels are fresh, the, 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 the actual resin is much softer. As a panel ages, it gets harder over time. So this panel, I think, Mark, is about... It's about two and a half years old. Two and a half years old. So it's a pretty old COVID, panel, basically. to be honest with you. Yeah, because of COVID, it's been difficult to get supply of, of, of components like this. So, uh, yeah, we've been left with an old one. But anyway, it's still possible to do. We just have to incorporate that extra sanding step because it's difficult to leave from four to 800 in, uh, in one big gap. So, so that's why we do on this, uh, the, the three-step uh, sanding process. Uh, so... Yeah, resins like this is a uh, very common, aren't they? For this is actually a, you know a finished gel coat, so the components gel coat rather than a tooling gel coat because it's it's softer. So this will mo what most components will be will be made of in the market. And I think we can see the finish on there, pretty matte, pretty uniform. You can't see any any defects or scratches that were on this panel because it's been stored here in the in the demo room for quite some time. There were cons some considerable marks on here. They've all gone. Uh, nice and uniform, and I can now pass over to my colleague, Mark. Okay, thank you, Paul. No problem, thank you. So Paul's made a nice job of sanding that for me. Thank you, Mark. Down to 800. I'm going to start off with this product here, this product here, which is uh, Select. You'll see it on the chart if you look on the chart. I've also got a twisted wool mop, and it's been used before, as you can see, so I'm going to quickly spur that because all this dry stuff uh, is quite hard. And not only that, I'm in a, a grinding metal area, so <laughs> it, it may have picked up all sorts of stuff. So always good, always good to... Now there's lots of different ways to do that. You'll see it's nice and clean now. I, I just use a brush, which uh, we produce but you there's lots of different methods okay so application of product you can put it on the mop you can put it on the panel I don't really mind which you do it makes no difference to me whatsoever this product uh, likes a bit of speed uh, but no pressure so I'm going to start off at low speed so that we're not all wearing too much of it and then I'll speed up I'm going to reapply now because that's quite a dry, dry mop. You can see from the colour that I'm taking product off of the surface already. And no pressure to speak of. Have a quick look to see how I'm doing. It's actually, it is a very hard panel and it has been polished before a couple of times. So I'm making good headway, but I'm 
Another couple of goes would do it. Looks right to me. Why, why are you using the, lamb, uh, the twisted wool rather than a lamb's wool? Twisted wool is the most aggressive. We use the lamb's wool for finishing. This is the most aggressive applicator that there is. And, uh, and speed affects aggression as well, right? Yes. Th this particular product likes a lot of speed, but not too much um, pressure. So if you feel that, you'll feel that it's actually quite cool. Yep. Really quite cool. Yep. I'm never, never going to burn through. This machine runs at 2,500 RPM. Uh, that product you can use up to 3,000 RPM quite happily. And that's one of the dangers of composite materials is, is heating them up too much and burning through. So yeah. if you can get a product that works uh, quicker, yeah, and also all the And also with lighter pressure because the other good thing about that is, to be fair, this is on a bench. Uh -huh. If I was working up the side of a boat and I had to press as well, that's, that's a lot of effort involved. And yeah. we, this particular product is very popular in the, in the States um, for manufacturers because they don't have to really press it on the panel. Okay, I'm going to go one more time uh, and then we'll move on to the finishing stage. So that's also going to become Profile 200 Select. It still keeps the name Select but it's going to be called Profile 200. And on the, I think on the slide it's named. It is, yeah. We, we, the, 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 as we said, the Freckler range will be changing uh, coming into 2022 on the profile ranges. So having an update, some nice new labels. And uh, we have fu future-proofed our, our brochure to, to recognise that, so uh, to make things clear. I think uh, one, one thing I'm noticing as well, Mark, is the amount of compound you're using is quite, uh, quite small. Yeah, I'm not using an excessive amount. Yeah. Um, with a wool applicator, you use more than a foam applicator, but most of these sort of GRP applications are with, are with wool, and that's not a huge amount of product, no. There are certain manufacturers where you need to really throw an awful lot of product on to keep the lubrication up. I, I can now, see that in my, my overalls, I have a good, sp a little bit of a spatter, yeah, a but not too much. Yeah, I need, I need yeah, an apron from yeah, you next an time. An apron is good. <laughs> so uh, if, this was, if this was a white panel, I'd be finished now, to be fair. And if it was a relatively recent panel, I'd be finished. There is still a little bit of work, but, but we're 90% of the way there. You can probably see that there's now at least a reflection of, of bits of me in the, in the panel. So I'll move, on to the, I'll move on to the finish, Paul, yeah? Why not? OK, so that's whip this off got to get my finger under there there we go this is a right. velcro one we do also a double-sided one that bolts straight on the machine uh, which is popular in places where they don't necessarily use the finish so if this was white as i say you probably wouldn't do this stage is it in, is it important as well mark to make sure you use a particular pad with a particular compound and not to mix your compounds from one to the other I would normally say so. If, you, if you're happy to spur, and as long as you're not going from an extremely coarse product to a very fine product, it wouldn't be a problem. But mostly you don't need many products anyway, so the, the applicator would be dedicated to whatever you're using. Okay. So I'm going to give this a quick spur as well. Is that this is a lamb's wool now, so you can see the difference. Uh, probably you can see the difference. <laughs> and I'm going to use a product called Finish now. And what this would do on darker colours, 
not so much on the whites, as I say. I don't know many um, boat builders and places that do GRP parts that use the finish for, for very light colours. This one you don't use at such high revs. This is, this is about 11, 1200 RPM max. Um, obviously, that's just a guidance. If you're comfortable a little bit faster, it's not a problem, as long as you're not damaging anything. And again, we're not looking at an awful lot of pressure. I'm not leaning on this. Okay, we're very uh, cognizant of the fact that it's very boring watching a man just polish something. So <laughs> we're doing it to a certain standard. It uh, would probably and we're getting quite short of time as well. Yeah, so uh, yeah. we need to speed up a little bit if we can. So there we are. I now have, let's pop the clamps off. So what that would do for you on a darker colour is it would, you can see it's, it's definitely. If we can try and get the light into that uh, yeah, panel, opposite way, there, other way. It? Yeah. There we go. You see, so. Now you've got a nice sharp image there, a bit fuzzy over there as you can see, but nice and sharp there. So as I was saying, that's uh, on dark colours that would help get rid of all your holograms, swirls, brings your panel up really nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, Mark. I'll move these out of the way. So now we're going to move on to the, uh, the next uh, panel that we've got in the process. If we just bring up the next uh, slide, please, Martin. Now this actually uh, says epoxy resin gel coat, but we're, today we've actually got uh, a vinyl ester mold tool uh, coat. Again, like I said before, very old, so it will it will act like uh, an epoxy, which is the hardest of of the gel coats out there in the market. So, so for this material, we do need to follow quite an extensive uh, sanding process. You can see it here. So five steps in the sanding. Uh, but thankfully only one polishing at the very end. That's due to the fact we've got to take the abrasives all the way up to P1500 before we can start em employing uh, uh, any kind of compounding just purely because it's so hard we need to do most of the work before we get to the, the final stage of, uh, of, of polishing. Okay again I'm aware of time so uh, let's get on with this as quick as we can. Um, a lot of these processes we're doing today we, we probably would spend if we were really making some, a high-end product, we'd probably like to spend a little bit more time on, on both the sanding stage and the polishing stage, right, Mark? Mm. But again, today, we're just trying to give you an idea of uh, how well our products work together, not to produce the absolute 100% perfect component. But so it, would, it would also be much faster in, with newer, newer com, um, products. Of course, yeah, yeah, fresh material as well. OK, so I'll get on sanding. So start with P400. I'm going to go to 600, 800, 1,200 and then finish with a 15 before I pass over to, to Mark with his uh, compound. So uh, let's go.
Ausgang. Dann gehen wir ab. Thank you for that, Mark. Ooh, put them the right way around. So as you can see, we've, uh, we've got uh, that panel nicely flatted down now. Um, you can see um, a few uh, scratches still on here, which is gonna be a bit of a challenge to take out, to be honest with you. This panel's obviously had some, some kind of impacts over the time it's been stored in the, in the demo area here. So again, if we were to make a perfect example of this, I'd spend a bit more time going over these areas with the coarser grits before we move on to the finer, but we just simply don't have that time today, unfortunately. Um, just a little bit about the disc, uh, discs I was just using. The P1200 and the P1500 and, and discs are, are kind of this grade or 1000 upwards. Are, we have a film backing on these discs. The paper backing is not actually uh, uh, consistent enough for us to apply the really fine grits to. Uh, so if we put these grits on a, on, a, on a paper disc, they wouldn't give us the consistent finish we get from a film back disc. Uh, they also, be, due to the nature of film, can be used slightly wet if, uh, if, uh, if needed as well. So yeah, really nice product. This is our Norton Ice product film backed uh, fine discs here. Okay, so there you go, Mark. I'm gonna give you a bit of a challenge there with the scratches yeah, that yeah, are still I left could, in there, but- uh, I could see from the- Yeah, I knew I, I could see it you. It was hard. Thinking, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Life's so, not easier. No, no, no. <laughs> so this is the product I mean, which in the new regime or the new label will be called 400 um, Advanced Plus. 
it should have actually some kind of a dosing uh, device but I don't have one of those today so I'm going to cheat a little bit so that I don't have to pour it out of that okay same applicator as before actually um, but I'm going to spur it and it's more about the particle size all our products are intermixable they're all water based so not a big problem there And I'm going to apply this by technical method, time-honoured fashion. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if in doubt, use your fingers, yeah. right? Something like that. <laughs> Spread it nicely around. Start off at slow speed so we don't wear too much of it. Again, oh, we haven't mentioned it, but all the speeds are also on the back of the bottles. We also didn't mention that this is just going to be a one-step polishing process. Uh, the reason for that is that you don't need a massively high gloss level on a, on a mould component because you're going to put mould release agents straight over it. So as long as it's blemish free and we've got rid of all the scratches... <laughs> Thank you. Which would, um, ..which would impact on the finished product, of course. Okay, I'm going to give that a quick wipe. It's not finished, but it's going to have a quick wipe. Thank it'll, you. it'll be fine. I'm sure you've worked your magic there, Mark. Well, there's certainly a lot gone. There's a little bit round the edges. I, I, think, I think, obviously, we, we, we can know the small scratches on there. That, that, that's obviously extra damage than you yeah. normally see, but yeah. the, the finish we have here is, uh, is more than acceptable, as you say. A long, a longer standing process due to the, due to the nature of... Uh, of, of this harder, harder material, but uh, if I can find the light there somewhere, here it is, yeah. You can see, again, no holograms on there. Uh, it's a nice defined edge on the light there, rather than it being a bit more uh, opaque around the edge of that light here. So you can see we've still got... Uh, we've still got some scratches to remove, but a second go would probably get rid of that. And yeah. as I say, it's, um, it's just a case of you don't want to watch me sand or polish for the length of time it would normally take. <laughs> It's okay, I can relax while you're doing that, so it's never <laughs> never too bad for, for me, Mark. So yeah, so what we really were trying to show you today is the is the combination of uh, of the products from the sanding products from Norton and, and the compounding and polishing products from from Forecla, our Forecla division. You don't need to go anywhere else. It's a full system approach for your composite panel uh, sanding uh, applications that you you, you have, um, Christine. Uh, I heard you trying to interject, interject. I mean, I, I do have to say, Mark can't hear Christine on, on the presentation. She doesn't have an earpiece like me, but uh, Christine wanted to add something to you. But have you got anything to add, uh, Christine? Uh, I have been answering questions on the chat because of time. So I have um, given more information about the different sizes in the products, which products you're using for polishing. But I did want to say Mark uh, is a very um, uh, perfectionist uh, polisher. So one thing he is used to is the automotive finishing, uh, which in the case of composites, uh, you can safely say the expectations are quite different. So the surfaces that Mark yeah. has shown here are really excellent level for composite. It's a very good point, Christine. The, the finishes in, in, in any market are different. It all depends on the end use and the application of that component that's being produced. I mean, for a composite that's used for street furniture is not going to be as, as a particularly good finish as a composite used in the high-end uh, marine market. So all the same material, but 
uh, there are different end mm. requirements of finish for that product. So, and again, this is all applied in the guide we've produced. Uh, we have different types of finishes for different types of market within that guide. So, please have a look at your uh, at your leisure, and uh, I'm sure it will be helpful to you if this is a market you'd uh, like to get uh, more active in or are very active in anyway. Okay, so again, aware of, of time, uh, we are running a little bit over where we want to do, but uh, hey, that's life, that's live TV for you. Um, Christine, uh, we, we were doing the question and answers at the end. When, uh, if, yeah, we'll, we'll announce that at the end if you, if you don't Oop. mind. I've just lost audio. Sorry about that. Uh, would you plug me in, please, Mark? Yeah, sure. Thank you for that. Um, it's hanging there somewhere. Yeah, so, go, go um, for those people that are watching the, the recorded session today, that's, uh, that's the end of the demonstration today. Any questions on what you've seen, please contact uh, Norton. We'll be happy to, happy to help you. But thank you for, for joining. It's our pleasure to have you. Come back and join us on the, on the next sessions. Uh, be, uh, you'll be most welcome. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.